In this video, we'll solve and analyze a linear system related to the concentration of chemical reactors. There are three coupled reactors, and we want to find their concentrations C1, C2, and C3. The units of C is grams per meter cubed. Every day, a certain amount of mass, expressed in grams per day, is provided to the reactors. These are given by the right-hand side of the equations. As seen from the A matrix, all three reactors contain some mixing coefficients. Each reactor interacts with the others to some degree. We want to compute the inverse of the coefficient matrix, then use it to solve the system. The A matrix is 3 by 3, so we could theoretically invert it by hand, but I'd rather do it in MATLAB since this is an applications-based course. The equations are given to us in the problem statement, so let's plug them directly into MATLAB. We're given the inverse of the A matrix and the resulting reactor concentrations. Although I originally suppressed the inverse of the A matrix, I'm going to unsuppress it so we can actually inspect every element. We can see that all the elements comprising the A inverse matrix are pretty small, but this is contextually appropriate because the inputs we give to each reactor are on the order of 10 to the third power. Therefore, increasing the daily mass input by just 1 gram per day only yields a very small change in the concentrations. The ith column represents the change in the concentrations if we add 1 gram per day to the ith reactor. For example, the first column represents how all three concentrations change if we add 1 gram per day to the first reactor. Unsurprisingly, the first reactor will experience the largest change. This trend applies to the other columns. If we scan down the second column, we see that the second reactor will have the largest change. Interestingly, this element is a whole order of magnitude smaller, so adding 1 gram per day to the second reactor doesn't really affect the concentration of the third reactor. Finally, the third reactor's concentration will change the most if we increase its daily mass input. An interesting question is determining what percent of a reactor's concentration is due to each source. From the matrix inverse video, we know that the ith element of the c vector is calculated from the dot product of the ith row of a inverse and the b vector. Let's take a look at the first row as an example. Reactor 1 has a total concentration of about 339 grams per meter cubed. This means that 290 of the 339 is due to the 4,000 grams per day we gave to reactor 1, 19 of the 339 is due to the 1,500 grams per day we gave to reactor 2, and 30-ish of the 339 is due to the 2,400 grams per day we gave to reactor 3. You can sum these numbers and it'll add to 339, which is not a coincidence. Let's normalize these to express them as a percentage instead of the raw numbers. This means 85% of reactor 1's concentration comes from its own mass input, 5.7% of reactor 1's concentration comes from the input to reactor 2, and so forth. We can repeat this process for the other reactors. It seems that the concentration of reactor 2 stems from fairly even contributions from the three mass inputs. This might be puzzling because the elements in the second row of the A inverse matrix are not really the same size. The 2-2 element is roughly three times the 2-1 element, and roughly twice as much as the 2-3 element, so you might expect the 2-2 element to dominate. But if you look at the B vector, we supply much more to reactors 1 and 3 than we do to reactor 2. Even though the cross-mixing terms given by the A inverse matrix may seem like reactor 2's concentration is largely dependent on its own mass input, we aren't supplying enough mass relative to inputs 1 and 3 to see that dominance come through. That's why the constituent concentrations comprising the total concentration of reactor 2 are so evenly split. Now we see that 65% of reactor 3's concentration is due to the input to reactor 3, and only 4% is due to reactor 2. This follows the same logic as before. The 3-3 element of the A inverse matrix is much larger than the 3-1 and 3-2 elements. Also, there isn't much mass given to reactor 2 compared to reactors 1 and 3. These reasons are why the most significant source of the reactor 3 concentration comes from its own mass input. 
If we were to bump up the input to reactor 2 significantly, we would see much different percentages across all three reactors. With that out of the way, let's continue to part B of the problem. Our friend Matt Lab solved the system himself. He must have made some mistakes because his C vector doesn't match our C vector. It would be nice to quantify the amount of error between our answers. We can do this using the norm. We'll use the built-in norm function and compute the three standard types of norms, the one norm, two norm, and infinity norm. We made the error vector and computed the three types of norms. If MATLAB's answers were highly accurate, all three norms would be pretty close to zero. Instead, each norm gives us a non-zero answer. The one norm tells us that the total difference between our concentrations is roughly 74 grams per meter cubed. The two norm is the Euclidean distance spanned by the errors. The infinity norm says that the worst case error for any one reactor is 39.2 grams per meter cubed. These are all pretty far from zero, so we can conclude that Matt Lab definitely screwed up somewhere. This can be confirmed just by looking at his C vector and our C vector side by side. We should also note that the errors are on the order of 10 to the 1 power, and the concentrations themselves are on the order of 10 squared, so the fact that the errors are only one order of magnitude less than the actual concentrations is problematic. For part C, we want to find how much more mass should be added to reactor 3 per day so that the concentration of reactor 1 increases by 10 grams per meter cubed. We can solve this using the matrix inverse. The matrix inverse video gave us formulas to compute the change in an output given changes to the system's inputs. In this context, we can eliminate the first two terms because only the input to reactor 3 changes. We know how much we want to bump up the concentration of reactor 1, so we simply need to solve for the delta B3 term. To raise reactor 1's concentration by 10 grams per meter cubed solely from adding mass to reactor 3, we need to add about 800 grams per day. The beauty of the matrix inverse is that we didn't have to resolve the system to obtain this answer, but let's resolve it anyways just as a check. I made a new B vector just so we don't mess with the original B vector. I also increased the third element of the new B vector by the amount we just calculated. I resolved the system and computed the difference in reactor 1's original concentration and the new concentration. Lo and behold, we get exactly 10 grams per meter cubed. The last subproblem wants us to do something similar. Now, we decrease the mass inputs to reactors 1 and 2, and we want to know how the concentration of reactor 3 is affected. This one is pretty straightforward from the formula. We know how much the inputs change, so we don't need to rearrange any terms. These del variables are negative because we are decreasing the mass input. The last statement takes the relevant elements from the A inverse matrix and multiplies it by the changes in B1 and B2. The multiplication yields a two element vector. Each element represents the change in reactor 3's concentration due to the change in each mass input, so we need to sum them to find the total concentration change. We obtain a negative answer, so the concentration of reactor 3 will drop by 15 grams per meter cubed. Once again, we can check this by resolving the system.
The C new variable solves the system using the modified B vector. Unsurprisingly, we get the same results, although the C3 diff is positive instead of negative because I did C of 3 minus C nu of 3 instead of the other way around. This concludes the reactor concentrations problem. Even though this problem is simple, there's a lot you can do with the matrix inverse to truly understand the relationships between inputs and outputs. Taking time to really think through the meaning of variables, elements within variables, and whatnot will greatly bolster your understanding of the problem, and you'll be more confident moving forwards. It's one thing to get the answer, but it's a whole nother thing to know what your answer means and if it's right. See you next time.